just three ordinary guys trying to understand the crazy world around them. We don't have all the answers, but we've got all the questions. You're listening to Just Add Bourbon with Jimmy, JD, and Brad. Welcome, everybody, to the Just Add Bourbon podcast. I'm Jimmy Don Kerr. I'm Brad Broaddus. And I'm J.D. Dammer. And it is another beautiful Sunday evening here in the hills of eastern Kentucky. You know, I say that to start the show every week. It's a beautiful Sunday evening here in the hills of eastern Kentucky. But if you look outside, right, it, it's really crappy out right now. Yeah, you it's, definitely it, lied just now. <laughs> I, I just lied. I'm sorry, everybody. It's raining. It's been, and J.D. and his poppers. That was cold <laughs> last week, wasn't it? Yeah, I just found that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, J.D. I was on a riff there. No, anyway, let's <laughs> always so say that. So it is. It's a it's a cold and it's rainy and it's dreary outside, but it's still a beautiful day to be in the hills of eastern Kentucky. And uh, we've got a special guest with us today, um, all the way from Turkey Creek. Well, used to be from Turkey Creek, now from up around Cincinnati. Yeah. Uh, Josh Williams. Uh, Josh is the host of the Well Dad Gum podcast. Um, has been one of our biggest supporters really from day one. Has always shared our stuff. Has actually taught us how to do some recording uh, things as far as doing the actual recording of the show. And Josh, we appreciate all that help, but welcome. Uh, thank you, man. Appreciate being on and finally getting to meet you guys. And I've had a couple of you on the show already. so <laughs> I was going to say anything, but he has had a couple of us on the show. Who haven't you had on the show yet? Well, uh, I think it was the that one guy. Um, what's his name again? <laughs> Well, JD, I mean, you know, people I, don't remember. That's that's one of those situations where you save the best for last, right. and you don't want to hurt your all's feelings. So we're trying to put enough distance because when I come on there, they're going to realize who the star is, and I do not want to overshadow. You. That was Josh's words, not mine. We, Josh, we, don't want to overshadow everybody. We all know who the star is, Jimmy. John, it's definitely you. <laughs> well, I'm just glad you can acknowledge that. No, so. Josh, thanks again for for coming on, yeah, and uh, we're glad to have you. You home for the holidays? Just home? Yeah, this is our Christmas that we got to spend with my side of the family. Uh, we she had to work on Thursday, my wife, and uh, we've had like three Christmases up there near Cincinnati, and so we came down and uh, and actually uh, with uh, the passing of Pam Maynard, she's actually my godmother. Oh, is that uh, right? Yeah, growing up, we grew up with her um, coming over to Turkey all the time, spending time with our family. So it was kind of. One in one, we were kind of coming in for Christmas, and uh, we got to experience going to be with her and her family uh, during that time of morning, and so that was great to be able to be a part of that. Um, and uh, but yeah, mostly it was going to be Christmas, and, and our kids are sick, and so we've had a, a big old ball of fun over on Turkey Creek. It's been it's been a good time. We're going to try to haul them all back to Cincinnati tonight and see how that goes. So good deal. Did you by chance happen to listen to our episode last week? No. Um, I don't know. I it think, was our Christmas episode, and okay. for those who haven't listened, you must go listen because JD. I was jokingly saying I was the star. JD is the star of that particular episode, and we're going to get into <laughs> some behind the scenes stuff here at the end of this show, and and talk a little bit about my falling off a ladder yesterday, and Brad coming to my rescue, and also my mom jumping onto me. For something JD did, yeah. <laughs> and and I cannot forget this JD's awesome mom, who got JD maybe the best Christmas gift. I, it was one of those where it's very subjective. <laughs> well, that was one of those situations where I was like, why did I not think of that? Wanda is the best. <laughs> I'll say that might be the best Christmas gift I've ever got. <laughs> Me too, Brad. Me too. That was I, so great. Like I was so on the fence about posting there or not. I was like. I've got to do it because I'm going to make Brad and Jimmy Don's week by just posting that. <laughs> Thank you for being a good friend. And, and Jimmy Don was wanting to change it to our logo, by the way. Yeah, oh, no, I almost changed the Facebook picture to that. Um, but out of respect for JD and his love for Donald Trump, I don't want to put that out there and make it seem too, you know, too overboard, uh, JD, with his love for Trump. Hey, before we go on, I know we didn't discuss this, but I think we all recognize, you know, about Pam Maynard passing away, you know, a really, you know, just a, constant figure here in the community you know somebody really had an outstanding influence on a lot of children here in the community you know it's a sad loss for us all here mark i think you all will agree with that oh yeah absolutely she was a teacher i had her as a teacher she taught with my wife amy just thought the world of her I, as long as i've known pam she's been involved with high school athletics uh, generally the girls basketball team uh, the coach here robin newsom and her were great friends and uh and it was very sad i hated to hear that um she 
you know, softball, girl softball. My daughter, our daughters play softball. Pam was always there telling us, tell me and JD to be quiet. And, you know, she's just a great person. And it is sad. And, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to her family. Like, like she, I always got tickled to Pam though. Like she'd been in the hospital. And like she was one of those people that overshared. She's like, I ain't had bowel movement in a week and a half. <laughs> okay, man. Thanks. Yeah. Let us Thanks, know. Man. Yeah. So, but, but seriously, the uh, community is in grieving for her. Like, she was an outstanding person. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, God bless Thanks. Pam and her family. The world needs more people prayers. like Pam Maynard. Absolutely. She was an awesome lady. All right. So, no real good way to segue from that into the first topic of the night. But let's talk a little bit about our old pal, Jeffrey Epstein. He's provided content for us for. Months need a little theme song clip to throw in every time you bring him up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. We've talked about Mr. Epstein <laughs> really from the beginning, and I got two stories on Epstein this week, so I'm just going to start with this one. And this is the headline this is from CNBC. I don't want anybody to mistake that I don't look or I only look at Fox. Missing jail video from first Jeffrey Epstein suicide attempt has been found, prosecutors tell judge. So the article kind of starts like this. Federal prosecutors have found surveillance video of the area around the cell of accused child sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein on the day of his first jailhouse suicide attempt, according to the new court filing. The video, which prosecutors said was actually preserved by jail staff, as previously requested, was being sought by lawyers for Epstein's former cellmate at the Metropolitan Correctional Convention Center in Manhattan. So... The one thing, and this has to do with the first time he actually tried mm-hmm. to commit suicide. Why would that video have disappeared to, to begin with? Why would anybody care? Unless there was something there that nobody wanted us to see. And then two weeks later, he actually did commit suicide. Air quotes, as J.D. likes to say. So, Brad, when you saw that, you know, they found the missing video. What were your thoughts? Don't really know what to think about it because we don't know what's on it, but I can just imagine that it's going to show somebody going in his cell. But who knows? You know, the whole thing's been crazy. There's been twists and turns all the way around. Um, so just kind of interesting to see if they release what they, you know, what's on the video. Yeah. Um, now this might be a blow to you guys. I don't know, uh, but the whole Epstein thing, after doing any kind of research into it myself, and I'm not an outlier by saying this, but uh, the cameras were turned off and stuff because he was helping carry in the body double to lay in the cell that had the choke marks already on it and stuff like that. While he skipped out and went back to his island to hang out where people can't really get to. So I stand on the boat that you know he's still out there kicking it around because this is all storybook movie stuff that's going on. I don't see that so far fetched that he's still alive and that was a body. Well, there was actually pictures that came out and people were actually saying that it didn't even look like him. Oh yeah, no, that's true. There was a picture taken by somebody as they were the coroner was bringing him out of the jail, and they were like, "That's not even him." They were showing the earlobes. Yeah, I think that's what you know. This first tape may show us. You know, just how determined was he in hanging them? You know what I'm saying? Like, there are a lot of body language experts in the world. And when they look at somebody, they watch you go through, you know, when you're going to go kill yourself, I imagine your body language will tell a lot about your mental state. And so, I think that's what made this first video may show, whether they make it public or not, I don't know. But I want to see how determined he really looks in his attempt to kill himself. And the thing about him killing himself that I never could really understand was I believe what is in those cells, like their bed sheets, is not much more than toilet paper, right? As far as, so I don't understand how, if he hung himself on the bed sheets, that it had the strength to actually do that. And maybe that happened, maybe it didn't. Um, but like with what Josh was saying, you know, another theory out there is that he is in witness protection because they knew everybody would try to kill him and afraid he was going to rat all these people out. So they faked his death and pulled him out. Now, I don't know legally around witness protection what you can and can't do or can and can't say to the public. I don't know. There's definitely a lot of different theories out there. And as crazy as this story has been, some things that I thought would have been far-fetched in the past, I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty open-minded about 
what the possibilities are. Well, I am too, and I mean, I you know, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't know what the, what really happened, but I hope what Josh says is the truth. <laughs> well, <laughs> not me. Would, it would make me happy. Not me. It won't make me happy I, because I hope I hope he killed himself. I'm, this is a pedophile. I hope he's. Oh I'll, no, he'll get his. <laughs> but I've got no remorse for anything. If he killed himself, then good riddance. See you, The above. worst punishment you could give him would be to stick him in general pop. Because those guys oh, yeah, don't that, play when it comes to pedophilia. Right. Oh, and, and they would. He'd be somebody's girlfriend real quick. Yeah, but that's a far cry from being on the island sipping mimosas. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the same so, feel. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that was the same feel I have about it. Was like I, I say that jokingly, or not jokingly, but I and I don't. I'm not like, oh, hey, I'm gonna go out and profess this to everybody I see. Like he's still alive, but I feel that, and I'm like, it's not far fetched. It can be true, and it's like what you said. I wish he did kind of off himself because he is a scumbag and he's a piece of dirt, but he has all the information of all these other scumbags that took, that partook in all the things that he was orchestrating. And these are high, high profile people. These are huge people. And everybody was like, it was the Clintons. It was the Clintons. It's just as much Trump as it was the Clintons. I mean, everybody had something to do with him. Everybody. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. There's a good possibility that everybody's tied in. Do you all think, because the story was big in the news for a month, and then it kind of disappeared with all the impeachment and all the other things, and then it was gone, do you all think that the the Epstein didn't kill himself, that going, I mean, just nonstop, right, for however long, a couple weeks, a month, do you think any of that had to do with it coming back into the public sphere? Oh, I think definitely. People's not let this story go away, right? They've kept it in the public psyche that, you know, Epstein didn't kill himself. And so now, as this footage comes out, this is something. It, because when, at the end of the day, what? Follow the money. And USA Today knows, and CNBC knows, and when you put a story about Epstein and these new tapes are, that have been re- found, it's going to sell papers, right? Because of all these memes that have been made about Epstein. It's, it's, it's a name game. We recognize Jeffrey. Six months ago, did you know who Jeffrey Epstein was, Josh? No. But I didn't either. I did, but because he's been in the news for a long time. Before but this but not, not not high not profile mainstream. like this. Not mainstream, like you're right. And, and so I think these memes have have done their job. Not only have they given me hours and hours of entertainment and laughter, but they've also kept it in the public psyche. And, and I think that's why you know NBC, CSNBC felt the need to run a story that the first tapes have been found. And this Does that makes sense. Oh no, that makes total sense. And this thing is clearly not going away. Because the other story is that, and I can't remember her first name, but Maxwell. Is it Jelaine Maxwell? Jelaine Maxwell, who was basically his madam. Mm-hmm. They It was his girlfriend for a while, became his madam, was known to actually go out and round up these young girls for him. She's under investigation by the FBI, and apparently there's some other people that are under investigation by the FBI that have to do with Epstein and, and this whole circle that he had built. Well, it's just, uh, I wonder how deep this goes. That's, that, that's the thing I'm, I'm, you know, really anticipating and how deep is the FBI or the CIA or whoever's involved or whoever's not involved, how deep are they willing to dig their hills in? And, and I'm, I hope whoever it is, man, I hope they all kill themselves because the world will be a better place for it. Yeah, that was a key point from, um, you know, from the information that came out. As it said, that the madam, as well as a number of other associates, so you wonder what these people are talking about, who they're turning on, and you know, when you said that he he has all the information, he knows where the bodies are buried, and that's absolutely true. But I do think in this case, when you're arresting somebody that that is that high profile they have all the pins lined up before they're going to make that arrest, right? They've got the information that they need. And I think he's a lot bigger fish than a lot of people think so. You know, you can go back to probably episode two and, and uh, you know, I, I still believe that Epstein was, whether it was Mossad, CIA, or both, that he was an asset and this was a honey trap business, probably specifically for politicians, you know what I'm saying? So he's got, they're getting these people on the island. They're getting videos and whatever else. 
And how easily would it be to control somebody if you had that kind of information, if you had them doing something they shouldn't be doing? And you know it's being recorded. So the people that are close to him now have already become pariah. You look at Prince Andrew, right? Those photos surfaced, and, and I mean, they have they have kicked him basically out of the palace. First off, before I get into my point, can I say kudos to Prince Andrew? Like, he's stuck around a lot lower than I thought he was going to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's still alive. Right. I, and I other people are killing dead. themselves. Yeah, I think we're dead. But I think your point's well taken, Brad. People don't understand how big a fish Epstein was, right? And all you have to do is go back two episodes on this podcast when we was talking about Deutsche Bank and all the business he was pouring in for those cats. I mean, he owed them like $31 million. And they didn't even care, did the Jimmy Don? They no. was like... Like, like you're bringing so much business. Like, we don't care if you how much you owe. And thirty one million dollars is not a drop in the bucket. So this guy's connected. Like he knows the big ballers. So I'm like you. I I, I want to see where the the bodies are buried and who who who's buried with them. Uh, now, what's his name? <clears throat> I'm trying to think of it here the whole time, and I'm not connected to your internet, so I can't look it up. But uh, uh, it was turning the frogs gay. What was the conspiracy theorist? Alex Jones. Alex Jones. <laughs> where the heck is Alex Jones right now? He's been talking about Epstein for years, not just, you know, six months ago, not just three years ago. He's been talking about him for a long time and all this different stuff that's coming out with him. I know he's a conspiracy theorist and he's been debunked on a lot of different things, but he's been spot on on a lot of crazy things, which everybody's, you know, kind of ousted him. And he's he's got his own thing going on, but you're not finding him on iTunes. You're not finding him on well, YouTube. You won't get us kicked off iTunes, probably. Was saying that was <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they have any platform, though, right? No, yeah, and and I will – one thing I'll say about Alex Jones, he gets he gets really crazy on a lot of things. He gets real animated. <laughs> I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, oh, he man. says some crazy <laughs> things. Retarded. And and maybe he is in some way controlled opposition. I don't I don't know that, but I will say this: Alex Jones is probably responsible for waking more people up in the last twenty years than anybody else in any form of media. Oh no, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, the things that he talks about sometimes you're right, a little out there. But he woke me up to a lot of different things. Him and Brad brought us, you know, to a lot of the things that were going on out there in the world. And like I said, Alex Jones to me, like I have a hard time listening to Alex Jones. He's just yeah. too intense for me. Yeah. You know, and some of the stuff's way too out there. But he's one of those guys that I would listen to and then take the information I got and then go try to research it and get down the rabbit hole to see right. if I can find anything. And you're right, Josh. A lot of the stuff that he said has turned out to be true. People yeah. thought it was insane. I know one thing specifically true. was, uh, you know, it just came out with, with some of the, I don't remember if it was WikiLeaks or, or – uh, Maybe the Google guy, I can't remember, but it came out that the Samsung TVs, the smart TVs, well, had internal cameras. Well, Alex Jones talked about that in like 2012. Yeah. I think he was also uh, ahead of the curve on Huawei, the yes. cell phones, the, the, the Chinese uh, cell phone makers. Yes. Thing. So, so he does lose me. Like, when he talks about L's and all that, like, I'm not even like. Yeah. All right, man, put the DMT down and walk away, you know. <laughs> but the guy has a lot of valid points too, man. But it's so hard. He throws so much out there. It's just hard to decipher through all of it. Well, and that's where, like, Joe Rogan, who everybody listens to or knows about and stuff like that, that's where he said conspiracy theorists have a hard time because they'll be right about some things. And he says this specifically about Alex Jones. He'll be right about some things, and that's what gives him momentum. Right. So then he'll start rattling off things that he's really passionate about, and it sounds like, okay, you're being crazy. But really, almost everything he's spouting out is something he's been proven right on. But the whole, they're putting chemicals in the water to turn the frogs in, it's a real thing. It's not him being silly. He's not just a meme. That was like a real thing. Uh, if you watch Jurassic Park, they're able to switch their DNA to be male or female, blah, blah, blah. And they were actually doing that to hold down whatever. But... He just sounds so crazy, you can't want to believe him. It's like, okay, man, just calm down for a minute. <laughs> yeah. So, no, he, one of the best podcasts I've ever listened to was him on Joe Rogan. With Eddie Bravo. When him and Eddie Bravo were going I out, thought they were going to fist fight. I did too. It was one of the greatest things I've ever heard. And I listened to it, come back from a public service commission hearing. I actually listened to it on the way down there and on the way back. It was so long and uh, it was awesome. But no, and you're right, though. Your point's taken on Alex Jones because, like I said, I, he has. Brad. And I've told that on here before, 
is when, you know, I really first met Brad. He was cool, good guy. I like hanging out with him. And then he started telling me some of these things. And we were watching some videos and doing some things. And I thought he was crazy. But what came from that was me going back and doing the research on what we were talking about and then finding out that what he was saying was true. And then you start doing the Alex Jones. And that's what, you know, we've said that on here before. People that are listening when we talk about this kind of fringe stuff is don't take our word for it. Absolutely not. Go look it up. On, on anything I say, don't take my word yeah, for it. Go, yeah, go get down the rabbit hole. And basically the way that it's worked for the last however many years is somebody would come out. a lot. Most of the stuff that people have learned in the last three years, I mean, I think everybody would agree that we know a lot more about the way the world works just in the last couple of years than in the last 20, right? But a lot of these things that have come to the surface, like Epstein and these things, it was already, it was public information. You just had to look for it. But what would happen is something would come to the surface. And then as soon as people started questioning it, you would see one of these like uh, Snopes is the funniest one. If you look into where Snopes came from and the people that run it, it, you'd never even read it. But like Snopes will come up and say this is debunked and that'll be the headline. So people think, oh, well, it's, it's debunked. But then once you read into the article, you'll see something it'll say like, yeah, well, this guy did steal all these orphans and did this, but it said that uh, it was 152 and it was actually just 151. That's been debunked. So if you read into the articles, you actually see that one piece of information will be extracted out of there that they'll say is false to try to make the whole story story false. My main take out of this is, Jimmy Don, you cannot use Alex, hashtag Alex Jones. <laughs> no, matter, no matter what. <laughs> no matter what. Hey. <laughs> because we will get the platform. <laughs> well, that upsets me because yeah. I'm sitting over here. I typed in my notes. Hashtag Alex Jones, J.D. You cannot do that. <laughs> so I, I was going to do a different topic next, but based on the conversation we just had, I want to get into this. Because it goes, I, I found this really kind of scary when it was sent to me. And so I'm going to read this just so that everybody has it and and can actually hear it. And this came from the Office of the Secretary of Defense. And it's a memorandum. Which, hold on. Let's let's qualify that then. From the Secretary of Defense, which means it's not a partisan issue. No matter what side of the fence you come down on, this is official government yeah, they sent this out to everybody right. in the government, in the military. And how much is it getting any publicity? Not that I've seen. I mean, I have. Now, when I was researching it, I did find it on pretty much every mainstream media source. But anybody but talking I about on cable television? I haven't news? seen it on cable television. Go ahead. So let me just read this because this is kind of crazy. And, this, you know, of course, there's some big words in here. Just bear with me. I'll help you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> it has come to the attention of the DOD that some direct to consumer. Genetic testing companies are encouraging DOD personnel to purchase genetic ancestry and health information through the offering of military discounts or other incentives. These DTC genetic tests are largely unregulated and could expose personal and genetic information and potentially create unintended security consequences and increased increased risk to the joint force and mission. Exposing sensitive genetic information to outside parties poses personal and operational risk to service members. DTC genetic tests that provide health information have varying levels of validity, and many are not reviewed by the Food and Drug Administration before they are offered, meaning they may be sold without independent analysis to verify the claims of the seller. Possible inaccuracies pose more risk to the DOT, DOD military personnel than the public, due to service member requirements to disclose medical information that affects readiness. Testing outside the military health system is unlikely to include a clear description of this risk. Now, this is the part that I found scary. Moreover, there is, concrete, there is increased concern in the scientific community that outside parties are exploiting the use of genetic data for questionable purposes including mass surveillance and the ability to track individuals without their authorization or awareness. Until notified otherwise, DOD military personnel are advised to refrain from the purchase and or use of the DTC genetic services. Now, you asked the question, is this being covered? And I said, well, when I was looking this up, I found the story on every mainstream source. But what wasn't included was that last paragraph. 
right. in any of those stories on every news organization. Where I found the best story was on Yahoo, who actually broke this. And that's where I actually found it. But, you know, we've talked about on here, just like Brad just said, Samsung, cameras on the inside. We've done shows on how they track us. Sure. Never, it never entered my mind that they would be tracking us through our DNA. (laughs) Well, this story was, I mean, there's nothing funny about it, but when this story came up, you know, during one of our, maybe our first or second episode, um, (coughs) I had a friend that told me and they were talking about some of the, the topics that we talked about and said, yeah, I thought the show was really good. The Facebook stuff was good. When you were talking about Ancestry.com and those DNA things maybe being used for nefarious reasons, I thought you went out in the weeds a little bit and that was a little tinfoil hat. Um, there's, there's, there's obviously <laughs> some concern around this. And the, the one thing that I couldn't figure out, you can think of a million ways. I mean, if you want to get real far out there and talk about cloning or anything like that, but the surveillance part, I can't figure out how that works. Like, I could understand how that could be a serious problem. Say, for instance, if you've got somebody's DNA, you could use their DNA for something, accuse them of something, and basically start a world war when you're talking about military. Go ahead, J.D. Well, I think when you're talking about you know, surveillance somebody, what happened, I, in one case I know of in California, a lady used one of these genetic testing labs to find out her ancestry or whatever, <laughs> And her uncle ended up getting prosecuted for a murder because of her DNA. They was able to trace it back through her DNA, her relationship to this uncle. Because I guess he wouldn't uh, volunteer to give his DNA up or something, or, or they couldn't get a subpoena for his DNA. But from her volunteering her DNA, he ended up getting in trouble and, and being prosecuted and convicted of this crime for, of murder. I mean, and, and, and that's, that's, I don't want to be tracked. And I don't think any of us knew, you know, through Facebook, Google, all these big companies, what a minefield data was, how much, how expensive, how much money they can make on selling your data to these other countries or other companies. And I don't think, we know, I think we all need to have some foresight and seeing our DNA as, a, as we, as the world moves forward and turns, the wheel keeps turning. This is the future, guys. We need to, pump the brakes a little bit before we go out and volunteer our information to just anybody. I I was all excited about it when it first came out of like, Oh, I love knowing about my ancestry. I love seeing my family tree that my great, great aunt twice removed put together and was like, Oh, this is your great, great grandpa. He was a slave owner or something. You're not like that, but that wasn't a real, (laughs) I'm just saying like that just popped into my head as being goofy. But, uh, (laughs) but the thing that kept me from signing up and paying him a hundred dollars, or whatever it is that you pay him, uh, is my wife is very against it. And uh, my wife's a very intelligent lady. Uh, she's a medical doctor, and and hopefully none of her medical doctor friends hear me talking about her on here. I don't assume that'll happen. Um, but her qualms with it, if that's the right word, <laughs> is that uh, the Mormon church, I believe, owns, is it 23 and Me? They own that. And she said they're actually taking your information and selling your uh, DNA, or not selling your DNA, but marrying off your basically your spirit DNA type stuff to their ancestors. What? It's a you got to look it up. It's crazy. It's uh, the frogs are gay, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 Sounds crazy, but that's why she wouldn't do it though. She was just like, okay, I'm not, I'm not getting to be a part of this because they're trying to, you know, she's a spiritual lady, and she's like, I don't want the Mormon Church taking my DNA to marry it to some of their ancestors. Mm. Which I was like, uh, okay, we guess we won't do it this month. <laughs> That's what I was getting you for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. One thing that comes to my mind with all this is even myself being skeptical of, every, I mean, I question everything. So when you see a, a murder and this stuff comes out on TV and I'm thinking, well, I don't know. I want to get more of the story. You know, you, you don't know what happened until you get the information. But they come up in court and they say we have DNA evidence. That is usually for us. That means, okay, it's a done deal. They did it or they didn't do it. Do they have the DNA? So by sending your DNA to these companies, 
And then, like JD said, it's it's mining, just like coal or gold or diamonds or anything else, right? They're they're mining this, and and it is the most personal thing to you. It is your blueprint. So if you have sent that off, would that mean there's a chance that if they wanted to frame JD for a crime, somebody would have your DNA? You could put it in a place. And then if that goes to court, if it comes on the news and says JD murdered this person and they found DNA evidence, what are you going to think? You'll think JD murdered this person, right? One of the most interesting things in the Yahoo article that I read, because like I said, that was the most, I think that's where it came from. That's where it was you know, broke, that this was out there. And I found it interesting from the military perspective. There were two points that they made. One, military personnel aren't protected like the rest of the American citizens. They're, I forget the name of the act. It was the Genetic Information Act or something like that, where <laughs> if, you know, a lot of the reasons people will do this is to find out if they have a, you know, a chance of, you know, a genetic chance of getting cancer or some other type of disease. We can actually affect military personnel from getting, you know, kicked up the ladder. It could actually stop their career right where it starts because they can take that into account. They're allowed to hold that against them. And the second thing I thought was interesting is they were talking about people who are assets in foreign countries or undercover, things like that, is if there's a database of their DNA that they may be able to smoke them out if they suspect them via their DNA, get their DNA and actually be able to track it through some kind of site <coughs> and find out that they're actually a, an agent of the USA. And that was the thing that I found interesting because at first you think, well, it makes sense that they wouldn't want to get the DNA out. Say if you were undercover, for instance, and it would blow your cover. But as compartmentalized as as the military is, you would have thought they would have just sent that to that small group of individuals that is that that does the the undercover stuff. And apparently this went out to a number of people. Like this is a serious threat. I mean, it, it's it's scary stuff when you talk about the, the DNA going out and, and having that information. It's just another database. So, you know, if you want to go back to Nazi Germany, you know, their whole big thing with, with genetics and, and having the, uh, you know, perfect... Um, what am I looking for here? Just the perfect class of people, yeah, right? So they had blonde-haired, blue-eyed. Well, it's one thing to be able to visibly see somebody's blonde haired, blue eyed, but what if they want to take this information of the DNA to basically take the 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 best pieces, put out the worst, and and essentially create that superhuman or super soldier? I know that sounds far out there, but new, new Nazi movement, right? I, I just don't know why Brad said this perfect specimen. He looked at me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was looking at Josh. Yeah, he just Not glanced you. over to you. Not, like, I ain't, I'm going to be a little upset with Josh. I ain't going to lie. I'm supposed to be the bald head guy with the beard here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. But it, You know, DNA has become a very, very important part of our legal system as well, right? Like, like prosecuting these crimes. And... It's almost took the place of fingerprint, and it hasn't quite yet. Because why? Because the database for fingerprint is so much bigger. Yeah. But what happens if we all pay somebody a hundred bucks to take our DNA? Which is you know. And the marketing of these products, yes, I mean, it's, mainly it's, they're it's giving really people, good, man. It's right? really good because I mean a lot of people are buying these as Christmas gifts for mm. people. Yeah. Yeah, there was a Black Friday special on. It was Twenty Three and Me or Ancestry. It was one of those that they were having a Black Friday half off. Uh, do you think the DNA itself is probably worth a whole lot more than the monthly fee? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I said it's just scary to think that they could use our DNA to market to us somehow. Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know, or, and it's being sold because we all know our information is getting sold, and that's big, big business. That's why the Facebooks of this world, the Googles, the all those companies are so wealthy, the Twitters. I mean, like I said, you can be sitting here and us talking about a product and then go home and get on your Facebook feed and that product pops up. I mean, that's pretty scary. And to think that they could do that with your DNA is, is I mean, it's pretty scary. I mean, like 
I mean, I remember you saying that. I think it was in our second episode. And I was like, eh, you know, really DNA. And you see this come out from the Department of Defense. That made it pretty real to me. And everybody ought to probably take... Because I'm real interested in my ancestry. Like, I have considered it too, Josh, about actually doing that. Just to know. It's cool, yeah. Yeah, because it would be nice to know where did we actually come from. They had the perfect marketing scheme. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. And that's how all these things work, whether it's social media or anything. Yeah. They're obviously going to give you what is the most appealing, what benefits you, and that's how you get everybody on board. And I think that's why it's so important that they do these things as private companies instead of like when we talked about, you know, Facebook coming out right after the the same day that the DARPA program was canceled. Yeah. Um, if you can do it as a pump, public thing and this is going to benefit you and you can find out who your ancestors are, then great. People are just willing to take that sample and send it off. I mean, if you think about all the information that they've got, from our buying habits to everything you do to what you watch on TV to what your political views are, what would be the missing link to complete the cycle of having everything about you as a human being would to be to get your DNA? Yeah, I, I mean, I've got the the pictures on Facebook, <laughs> and you're always, you know, <clears throat> giving me a, a newer reference on your picture on Facebook. I know what you look like all the time, every year. I know what your kids look like. I've already got that database. So now... If I can just get a little sample of your DNA, there's nothing I don't know about you. And, they're and also, the, if you've got a Samsung TV, they know what you're eating for lunch, dinner, which, which probably they're in your credit cards too. You know, they know what you're buying at the grocery store. But it's just a scary time, man. And I thought, when I read 1984 and George Orwell, I thought, man, this is so far-fetched. I remember, I remember having that thought. But now I'm like, man, George Orwell had more foresight than probably any of us ever. Think about now how many things that come equipped with Alexa. Right, they'll advertise that. You'll pull it up and it'll say this with built-in Alexa. So for Alexa to work, it has to have an external mic that is on all the time. It's not that you push it before you say it. It is on all the time. You can sit in your living room you could say something. So if it knows when you're talking to it, then obviously it's listening to every other conversation. So if you if you if you walk through your door and you've got a smart TV and you've got your iPhones and you've got an iPad and you think, well I can leave these in this room and then I'm going to sneak back to the other room. And then you got fire sticks in every TV or you've got Roku, you know, whatever you've got going on, where do you get away from the possibility of anything that you say within your four walls being basically collected as data. Oh, no. If I ever get in any trouble, I'm screwed because my entire house is nothing. I'm completely surveilled 24-7. I have Alexa. I have the Echo Dots. I have Fire, Fire Sticks in every single TV. <laughs> I have Samsung TVs. I have iPads that are probably in every single room, iPhones in every single room. I I can't say anything. I was going to say, with two toddlers, we've got so many Fire Stick remotes lost in the house. They could be recording anything they could think of. Probably mostly stuff they don't want to hear. I mean, there's probably one behind the toilet I don't know at this point. (laughs) (laughs) But but the funny thing I was thinking about was how Facebook just went before the government here not too long ago, and the robot was sitting there telling... I'm sorry, uh, what's his name? (laughs) Zuckerberg. Yeah, Zuckerberg. He was telling them all this different stuff and trying to explain how internet works to these old geezers and um, so he's telling all this stuff and so right after that you've seen a really big influx of commercials on the videos on facebook if you're just trying to watch a goofy video it's like 13 commercials in a 10 minute video and it's like oh that's really weird and then around the same time they started really pushing these new uh portal uh facetime things that run through facebook messenger that you just set up in your house and it's just a screen dedicated to talking to your grandpa because he doesn't know how to work the internet and hey grandpa i'm over here on the shelf and i was like we're not getting those like i'm not a huge conspiracy theorist but i'm like no they already know enough i don't want a thing in my house all the time that can record like they're they're making it so appetizing of like oh this will be so convenient to connect with people, and it's like, no, we have phones. We can do that already. We don't need an extra screen sitting around. But that's just my thought. And with the DNA thing, there was was actually, I want to say it was Arizona, somewhere like that, but there was at least one um, criminal case where the cops were able to get a warrant to look at the DNA, and they ended up catching some guy. So, you know, how do you feel... 
feel about that, that you, you send that off as something to find your family history. And then they can get a warrant to get into your personal DNA. I feel two ways about it. I'm going to talk about both, both sides of my mouth. Are you all ready? <laughs> like, I feel like my family history belongs to me. And that's personal. Shouldn't be allowed, especially going through a private company. Right? I also feel like, let's do whatever we got to do to catch the bad guys. And if that's going to these personal companies getting a warrant to catch them, then that, that's a good thing. This is like, so that's, that's both sides of my mouth. Like, like, and, and, and so I don't, I don't know. It's tough, man. Go ahead. Well, and I will follow you and talk out of both sides of my mouth because I understand what you're saying. I don't like it personally, but if it was my family right. was a victim of a crime, I would want you to be able to use Every whatever new- resources sure. were at your disposal to take care of it. Yeah, if I was a murderer, I would be pissed off though. <laughs> yeah. my, my knee's got a DNA. <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the flip side of that conversation, when we talk about these things and, and, what has happened, what's changed over the last 20 years. That was the hype. That's how they got everybody on board with the Patriot Act, right. which has taken more liberties than, than anything in the last, I, I mean, probably 250 years since we've been a country. Oh, no, absolutely. And I'll tell you something, and I don't know who sent this to me or where this originated from, and this is just another kind of offshoot of this discussion is there was some guy who had a bone marrow transplant. Who actually sent that article, Brad? Was that, was, that was actually Josh that yeah. sent that. And this guy had a bone marrow transplant, and now it turns out that he has two DNA types. He has the DNA of the guy who, I guess, donated the bone marrow right, as well as his own. And not just in his bones, like they were taking DNA samples from like his lips or his mouth, and it showed up completely this other guy. And actually, his semen is the DNA of the other guy. And I thought that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, when when I was looking at that article, it was actually uh, another podcast that I listened to and I'm associated with called Round and Round, the podcast. And they, they want to get in contact with you guys about it, actually. And uh, not so much this article, but just get in contact with you. I'll, I'll give you some information. Um, but they were talking about it, how goofy it was, because this is the first time this has ever been known that a bone marrow transplant can alter your DNA. So it's like they've been doing this science for, you know, however long. And this guy was working in a DNA lab and was like, oh, hey, you're going to have to do this on other people. Go ahead and run the test on yourself. He's like, okay, whatever. Swabbed his mouth, but run it through. And he's like, whoa, wait a minute. What? <laughs> I live 5,000 miles away. What? And I'm like. 15 years younger? I don't understand what's going on. So, yeah, it's uh, it, the funniest part about that is just, like, it's not known. We, we all take for granted that uh, so many people are smarter than us, and they're, oh, they've got it figured out. But they don't have it figured out all the time. And, and, you know, as we move forward with science, and I think you go back in early American history, you know, I think it was 1907, the Chicago, we, we, we shut down the U.S. Patent Office because everything had already been invented, invented, right? Do you remember that? Yeah. Like, it's crazy to think. You know, the times haven't changed. We're still the same. Yeah. Like, we think that we've got everything figured out, but we just don't, man. Nature has a way of, of doing things that, that we just haven't figured out yet. And and I don't know that we'll ever figure nature out. You know, I just don't think that's it. But it's just crazy that how far we come and how far we have to go. Like, yeah, we have a lot farther to go than what we thought we did. So this guy's DNA, you know, he was mixing DNA with somebody else. So they call it basically them being a chimera, um, you know, mixing two people, which is, it's kind of freaky because you go back to biblical type stuff and the, yeah. the whole fallen angels, all that stuff and mixing. Yeah. But anyway, so there was a, I, I think he's a doctor or whatever at Stanford said it said the average doctor does not need to know where donor's DNA will present itself within the patient. And that's because this type of uh, chimerism is not likely to be harmful. (laughs) Keywords, not likely. And then it said, it said, nor should it change a person. The brain and their personality should remain the same. (laughs) Should remain the same. We don't know. And the other thing I thought about reading this, so 
after it's going through all this stuff, they took mouth swabs from this guy. Um, they pulled his chest hairs. They took a semen sample. And I thought, man, <laughs> this kinky. guy's been through a lot just to try to get this figured out. <laughs> Sounds kinky to me. I don't know. <laughs> but I think the only chest hairs get my semen. <laughs> I think she was over last week. <laughs> place that they found uh, his own DNA, like in his saliva and in his blood, it was a mix between his DNA and his donor's DNA. And then his his chest hair was just his DNA. And his semen was just the donor's DNA. Wow. So what could that mean if you were having a baby and your semen was somebody else's DNA? I, I mean, I don't know how all that works, but it seems pretty crazy. So if you yeah, had... sure. I mean, that could cause some marital problems if you were to have a kid. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you get a, a donation from a black man... And his DNA is now yours, and you and Take your wife have a kid, and, sure. and you have a black kid. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, thinking. absolutely. And I don't like, know if you're it like passes you that way. For sure, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. But I think before they thought it was just in the blood, they didn't know that it went into the other places. Yeah, that's great. But, you know, I've also heard with, like, when people have organ transplants, that they will actually, in some cases, take on the personalities of the donors. Have you ever heard that? Oh, well, there's a, actually a story and this is like smart bell coast to coast stuff, I know, but mm-hmm. which I love. But they did a story about a lady, a girl who got a heart transplant in Florida, and her, the mom went to see this girl because her daughter gave this girl life. And she walked in the door, and the little girl looked at her and said, Mom. Now that's messed up. Yeah, that's crazy. Which yeah. is freaky. But, I mean, that stuff happens, man. Like, yeah. it, But, like, like, point yourself right now, and you'll probably point right at your heart. And that, that heart, like, is like, that heart recognized that woman, you know, as her mom. But there's anyway. A, there's uh, a lot of information <laughs> in there, though. That's what you always got to remember when you see that and you're like, oh, man, there's a lot of information you got to take into to consideration. This is a young person. Uh, their parents were in contact with this other person. Is it okay if I come see this daughter? Hey, there's going to sure. be somebody coming. They, they're they on drugs or whatever in the hospital. There's a lot of factors in that play area. So it's like, yeah, that sounds crazy, but, like, you got to remember, uh, well, there, you know, there's uh, people put in subliminal messaging without meaning to just as a parent. You know, my mom's done that for all of her life. She's always tried to do the best for me. I've never had a credit card in my life because she put it into my head. I'm not allowed to do that. And so as I got as an older man, I was like, wow, I've never had a credit card. Like, what the heck? <laughs> like, how have I made it through life without ever having? I haven't either, but it's not for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's, I mean, that, when that came out. From the DOD, I thought, holy crap. You know, that's one of those stop. And, no, it's a real deal <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those stop and kind of assess what's ha- actually going on around you. And I just, I recommend that the people listening go and check that out. So do you think with the technology that we've got now, if there's a way to scan, just for instance, you can put a, you can put a watch on your arm that'll tell you what your heartbeat is, you know, what your heart rate is at any given time and how many calories you're burning and all these different things. Do you, do you think that there is something in any of these devices that would actually be able to pick up a code to identify somebody? Um, and, and I just say that because we're normally, I think, probably at least 20, 30 years behind. I mean, when the iPhone came out on the market, I'm sure that that was something in its infancy. They were talking about that probably at least 30 years before that sure. and knew what they were capable of. I mean, uh, Nikola Tesla you know, talked about, basically described the iPhone to a T in 1923. Yes. So you've had these things happen over and over. Uh, speaking of, not to go off track, but the FBI vault just released Nikolai Tesla documents yesterday. So that could be it. Yeah, that we definitely do not want to go off track on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> but no, so that's that's a great discussion. It's very interesting. It's scary, J.D. It, I mean, one last thing, you know, Talking about your point, Brad, you know, with the watches, the phone. I mean, we had a home button on the iPhone for a long, long time. And we, we log in with our, our thumbprint a lot of times. And now we log I mean, in with our face. In our face. Like, like it's really scary if you stop and think about it. Well, I mean, Which it, is why I just listen to, you know, crazy music on my phone and then I don't think about it. Well, <laughs> how many times have you seen, like on Facebook, somebody took a picture of your kid and then it pops oh, up it, on your feed. It you. And it's facial yeah. because of the facial recognition. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I told you guys before, I went on a Disney cruise, been on several, and it is all face ID. All of it. Hmm. 
And I mean, they you don't even have to have a card. They will it will scan your face and pick you up. And it's not that and, we're so trustworthy of all this different stuff. We're just lazy and don't read contracts. Right. Sure. Oh, like if the I'm gonna tell you right now, the iPhone contract said you must sacrifice your firstborn son. Like I would have never read that, I, and I would have to chase. Chase would be a goner. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah chase there's no way I'm reading the whole contract. <laughs> so think about too with like you know we've joked about the ten year challenge and some of these things where if they just want to get your information and for facial recognition, they say, we want to get a picture of you 10 years ago. Yeah. We want to get a picture of you today. Um, but I just, I don't know. This just hit me, but I thought, think about how many pictures that you post of your kids from the time they're younger until, so by the time they're adults, you've, you've got every angle, every, sure, every digital thing you would need for facial recognition. Privacy is like almost non-existent at this point, right? Oh yeah, I mean there is no privacy. I mean, in my opinion, and like I said, my house is a surveillance workshop. I mean, the whole thing in yeah. every single room. Well, luckily I have suddenly cable here, and we don't. Our internet's terrible. So. <laughs> <laughs> be all right. There, We're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll jump over to the next thing, but I find that incredibly interesting. That is and like I said, yeah. if you're listening, dive into that a little bit. I know it kind of opened my eyes a bit doing some research for this and I thought, oh, you know, that's one of those step back moments and yeah. be like, oh crap. So you know, the, what I was going to talk about prior to jumping into that kind of went along with the Epstein thing was Kevin Spacey and another one of his accusers committed suicide. And it's just so disappointing to me that Kevin Spacey is this guy because I loved him up until the point of finding all this out. The Usual Suspects is one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, there's a show on Netflix where he's the president. I, I love that. But this makes the third person that was an accuser of his sexual misconduct that has committed suicide. How crazy is that? That's probably coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's no big deal, Jimmy Don. No. I think the I think the first one, because there was Four accusers, as far as I know. And the first one was hit by a car back in May. And then within a short time after that, the second accuser dropped his case. Basically said, I don't... That was a young boy, right? I think so. Yeah. Which, you know, that's the first thing goes through your mind. You know, you don't want to think like this about everything. But after you see the patterns and this go over and over, and these accusers... I mean, what's the first thing we say on here? Uh Uh-oh, they're going to end up dead. Yeah. So the second accuser drops the case. And then the third one, I believe, uh, died mysteriously. And then on, was it Thanksgiving or Christmas Day, um, the fourth one committed suicide. So you're telling me the only one that's alive is the one that dropped their case. Right. And if you just back up for a moment, because, you know, I guess any of this stuff could be coincidence. But what is the probability of having, we're not talking about there was 200 accusers and three of them died over a 20 year span. We're talking about four accusers. And in less than two years, three of them are no longer with us. Like, I don't know. Like, like what's the chance of it being a coincidence? I'm going to go on a limb here and say not good. Right? Like, and, and it goes back. I'm going to tell you, like, most of the stuff I've been accused of, I've been guilty of. <laughs> you know, like, like, I'm just going to throw that out there for everybody. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do with that information. But, and, and I don't know if, there, you know, if this is related to Epstein or not, probably probably not, but we're still talking about a powerful person, somebody who's got a lot of money, and I'm sure a lot of pull in Hollywood, a lot of influence. And, uh, you know, and this is the point of the show, right? I'm going to give kudos to Andrew again, Prince Andrew. For staying alive. Because, <laughs> like, I thought there was no chance he would be alive this long. Starting Andrew watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no we, we definitely thought about it. <laughs> no, I said that just when I saw that come across, I was like, my God. I mean, that's just, and again, that's scary. To think that you've messed one, with one of these high-profile people. And the same thing with Epstein. Epstein had some information. Sure. Now he's dead. Well, that's the thing you don't know. And, and maybe one of the underlying factors in this is you don't know what Kevin Spacey knows. You know, he's rubbed elbows with a lot of powerful people, I'm sure, over the years. And, you know, I mean, there's certain people you don't want to cross, man. Like, if you live in Martin County, you know the man that you don't want to cross. Right? Like, like we know who that is. Like, so, 
Anyway. Being the devil's advocate on this again, like not trying to debunk or anything like that, but I keep thinking about the, the fragile piece of the mind. How one day you can bump into a tree branch the wrong way and you're going to be a different person. Like everything's going to hit you different. Everything's going to work different on you. Um, and you're just going to be totally different personality. So when, if you guys ever blow up with this podcast and, and I'm sure you will, you know, I was going to speak positive affirmation. <laughs> if you get super big, there's going to be people out there. They're going to mess with you. Oh no. To no end. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, my little joking comment about uh, ancestry and going back to having a slave owner for a family member, I don't have that. But making that little joke, if I ever became famous, that's going to come back and that's going to, people are going to be sending me messages and emails and calling and any information they can find out, they're going to mess with you. And just like with Kevin Spacey, there's people out there that are advocates for him and that are going to bombard bombard these people with so much hate and and just, you know, you're a piece of trash. You're horrible. How could you do this to this, uh, you know, multimedia icon? You know, he, he was the president on the show. How could you do this to our president? Whatever. House there's, of Cards. The House, House of, of Cards, cards. yeah. yeah. How, it, there's so much delicate information there that as conspiracy theorists, that we're not deep into conspiracy, but we have a we have a tickling of it. We, we like to listen to it. We like to... Uh, you know, look at it and say, oh, that could happen. But there's so much more uh, just watching people and how one little thing can change their life completely. And one little bit of fame can, like, bringing all that attention from global uh, entities, it, it can change your life completely. Yeah, no, that's I, a great point. And, and I'm with you on that. Yeah. Especially one out of four, possibly two out of four. But if the man's hitting 750... Then I got to put my ten full hat on right. and say that's a little weird for me. Yeah. But no, I, I I agree with. It's you. good to keep that information flowing both ways. That's that's my point about it. I guess I'm not saying he didn't do this stuff, and I'm right along with you. I'm like, yeah, he he's totally got these people to be suicided. And then you don't know <laughs> at this point because Spacey was one of the first ones rounded up in this stuff. Yeah, and honestly, the people that get pulled in first are are in the best position because. There's only so many get out of jail free cards to go around. Yeah. So if they're talking, you don't know if somebody else is doing it from the outside to shut them up to try to pin it on them. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it, you, you have no clue. But we are definitely in insane times right now to where some of the things, I mean, even joking about Alex Jones earlier. Yeah. We're living in a time right now when you can have open conversation about some of these things and ask questions. That if you ask them three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, I know this for a fact, people would look at you like you had horns sticking out of your head yeah. just for having the conversation. So, you know, that's what's what's great about this now is that people are actually, you know, J.D. talks a lot about the people taking their power back. Um, I think this is the game right now because the Internet has created a monster I know obviously in a lot of negative ways, but in a positive way is that we can get on, we can throw out these conversations and people are going to talk about them and it's all going to work itself out because if, if people start separating from everything they've been told and actually just looking into the topics for themselves. Well, I mean, I think that's exactly, we talked about this earlier, but the Jeffrey Epstein case is, you know, example number one, right? Like that's the one case that I know of that is kind of they try to remove it from the the public psyche yep. that that the people are just not allowed that to happen right through social media through the internet and so it's good conversation is good and it's good that we are able to have this freedom to exchange ideas and and it's gonna be exciting in the future to see if we allow. The media to control what we think, if we allow politicians to control what we think, or if we're going to take the power back. And I, and I hope, you know, I, I always say it all the time, the best thing about Facebook is that it gives everybody a voice. The worst thing about Facebook... It gives everybody a voice. It gives everybody a voice, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So the best of us and the worst of us all have a voice. But I think it's it's a good thing. Overall, it's good that we have a voice. Even if it's on this small scale. Well, I think that's a great place to end the serious portion of this show. We've been far too serious up to this point. 
So now we're going to have some fun. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm drunk. So. <laughs> well, there we go. Not as drunk as I was last week. <laughs> I'm kind of seeing a theme here, JD. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem. I only get drunk six nights a week. <laughs> Eight, eight on a good week. <laughs> I've not got a Next got week, a we're going to be doing our intervention episode with JD. <laughs> you mean I want to do a story about my life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So last week's episode was our Christmas episode. And <laughs> if you listened, you heard JD and I have a pretty intense conversation about the impeachment. Do you remember that, JD? After listening to it again, I do. No, I remember it, yeah. So... JD, it was a good conversation. That yeah. was a great conversation, yeah. actually. It was it was really good. So after that it was Christmas, and JD posts a picture oh, yeah. of a gift that his mom gave him, and it was a giant Trump twenty twenty blanket. Keep America great. Keep America great. And JD, I think on behalf of myself and Brad, and and probably most of our listeners, or at least half of our listeners. I want to thank your mom, Wanda, for that gift. Can I just say, well played, mom. <laughs> I had no idea. I have not had the privilege of meeting your mother, but I love this woman. And not only because of the blanket, but she even upgraded from the MAGA to the CAG, from the Make America Great Again to the Keep America Great Again. <laughs> your mother will always have a special place in my heart. Yes, Wanda. We thank you if you're listening. We love your son, but we now love you more. Well, like I'm a mama's boy. Like I, I, that's one thing. Like to be serious with you a minute. Like I've got the best mom ever of all time. Even though she can be fooled sometimes. <laughs> but, no, no. Speaking of moms, oh, I got a bone to pick with you, JD Dammer. <laughs> I did get Jimmy Jimmy in trouble. <laughs> so we're at Christmas Eve dinner. We're down at Brad's. Brad has, has cooked up a, a great feast, him and my sister. And we're sitting in there, and we'd just gotten there, I think, and I was sitting there on the couch beside my mom. And I am, too, a mama's boy, J.D. Well, nothing wrong with that. And I got the best mom in the world. I truly do. And she's sitting there, and she looks at me real serious and says, so you don't remember taking a selfie? I'm like, what are you talking about? She said, on the Just Add Bourbon page, you posted and said that you don't remember taking a selfie. I was like, that wasn't me. And she didn't blame Brad. <laughs> it was immediately, Brad was in the picture too. <laughs> well, Jimmy, don't you stand on the show, you was a star. <laughs> I, was sitting, I was sitting right there, and it was the funniest thing. I've known your mom for 13 years now, and she gave him, I mean, the mean mug death stare. Yeah. Look, my mom is one of the most kind people you'll ever meet. She has the patience of Job. She truly is a great person. But when she gets mad, she's bad. She will cut you like a knife. Uh-huh. And I was sitting there like, "Well, I got scared." All of a sudden, I'm five years old again, right? And I'm like, "Mom, mom, mom turn over you." And she gave him that look, like the when he said, "It wasn't me, mom. It's JD." She looked up at him like, "What you talking about, Willis?" Yeah. Oh yeah, no. And I, I had to clearly explain to her, and I was like hunkered up over there, and I said, "Mom, that was JD. Listen to the show, and you'll know <laughs> that was JD." Well, that was the second best thing, including Jimmy Don, that I got to witness this week, and he'll get into that later. The the in, in fairness to me, I did not remember taking selfies last week. <laughs> I was listening to the podcast from last week and I was like I know every one of these trivia questions <laughs> and I think I got zero of them right <laughs> but no I think I got a few right but, but like I should have won that game and I should have got the Saturday line but man like I've never tried to argue why I was blacking out before <laughs> it's not as easy as it sounds <laughs> well, like I said the part my favorite part of that was JD's trying to argue by partisanship yeah well yes I, I was listening so I was <laughs> So about Wednesday, I sobered up. <laughs> I was driving to work. I was like, oh, I just was. I think I just sobered up. But I was listening to the the bipartisanship part of the portion of the show on Monday. And I thought, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, you're just arguing right now because you're drunk and belligerent and you just want to argue. And I know that everybody that knows me is skeptical of that because, <laughs> 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 but it's true. Like, like. I don't understand even what my point was of all that. I think I was trying to say it should be part bipartisan. It was a bipartisan, obviously. But I, I was yelling at my radio, turn my mic off. 
I just heard when I was re-listening to it, I heard out of nowhere, I said, J.D., by means two. Yeah. <laughs> it means two. Yeah. You said that, I was like, touche, Jimmy, no. <laughs> All right, so the other thing is, I don't know if you can tell or not, you know, obviously you people listening can't, but the guy sitting here is my shoulder is jacked up right now. And the reason that my shoulder is jacked up is because I'm a moron. But so yesterday, I don't know, it was probably what, noonish, one o'clock ish. We had some lights out in our soffit. So I went out, got the ladder, and I changed out probably seven or eight of them. Come around to this one side, and I've got the ladder, and I set it down on the ground, and it's real uneven. I thought, hmm, I don't know. But then I, I, leaned it up against the the house and I thought okay I'll try a couple of steps and see how this works so I get about four or five steps up I'm leaning against the house I'm good you're leaning to a certain side though right right I'm leaning like to er- this- everybody who's done any home improvement has felt this feeling before yeah. right like I'm just going to lean to the right side of this ladder and keep it balanced yeah. right so and, and I had the thought I need to go get this other ladder you know I have two or three different ladders one that would go straight up sure. and lean against the house explain and- how high these lights are <laughs> I'm going to say they're Good. probably 20 feet off yeah, the ground right. at a minimum. They're, I mean, it's they're up there. So I'm climbing up, and I'm like, no, oh, I'm good. You know, I'm good. I can get this one done. It takes, you know, 30 seconds at the, at the most. I'll get up here. So I get to the top. I am like the, you know, you've got the top of the ladder, the step down, which is the top step, and the next one down. I was standing on the second step down from the top, leaned against the house. And I turn around to grab the light bulb, and that's all it took. Mm. And that sucker went down, and I fell on top of the ladder and then flat on my shoulder. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, God, you know, that really hurt. (laughs) And I'm a little embarrassed, but I'm looking around. Nobody's there. And I'm like, okay, I'm looking for my wife, and, you know, they're in the house. And I was like, I know somebody had to hear that. Because I thought it pretty hard. I'm sure she came running. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but Brad did. I get up. But I see it. I get up, and I, I'm kind of, I'm addled a little bit. And so I get up, and here comes Brad walking up the bottom. And I thought, oh, God, he saw that. And I was trying to give him the A-OK sign. I was like, I was embarrassed. I was like, I'm, I'm good. And so Brad gets up there, and he was like, man, I was down there, you know, Kind of doing it, and all of a sudden I heard this thump. What I didn't know was what Brad actually saw. Yeah, we were standing out behind the house, and we were burning some Christmas boxes. Uh, me and my wife, because that's that's how we court here in the mountains. We yeah. like to hold hands and stand around a garbage can fire, right? We were yeah. burning some boxes. Now, I'm just going to say, people from around my area would be dumbfounded to hear that's what we do around here. <laughs> <laughs> so I just happened to be looking right at Jimmy Don's house. And I didn't know he was up there, what he was doing. And I thought that I saw something come around the corner of his house, like just this blob. And I'm sitting there looking. I just want to put on record that Brad just now described Jimmy Don as a blob. blob. (laughs) Well, I mean, I was 150 yards away. Yeah. Well, and and let me me say this because where I was at, Brad couldn't see me Uh, where I fell. I I could see from behind the house and you could see me. Yeah, so I see him fall. I'm going to try to get through the story without getting emotional. Um, but I'm, I'm sitting there, and I, I, I thought I saw him fall, but I was a little too far away. And then there was the delay in the boom of the aluminum ladder hitting against the concrete. So I hear that boom, and then my wife looks up, and she said, what was that? And I said, I'm pretty sure your brother just fell off a ladder. Icarus got too close to so, the sun. <laughs> my first instinct, and I thought, he's way up there. Like, that's probably bad. So my first instinct was like, okay, I'm going to sprint up there and help him out. But then I was kind of like, well, there's no need in really getting my heart rate up if he's dead anyway. <laughs> right? He's so, or if he's uh, dead. <laughs> right. He's going to so, be dead when I get there. <laughs> so I start walking up there, and I'm walking through the yard. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously in a hurry because I feel like I'm probably got to save his life. So, like, I stopped for a second. I was listening to the birds or whatever. And then just doing normal stuff that you do, like, when you're in a hurry to try to save somebody's life. And then maybe I stopped one more time to check my notifications. But then, anyway, I finally get up over the hill. And I can, you know, I've got all kinds of emotions 
going through my mind because I'm like, well, what if he's hurt? And then I'm and then I'm sitting there. I mean, and he's then, the star of our podcast. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'm overwhelmed with guilt because it crosses my mind. I'm like, if he needs mouth to mouth, yeah, he dead. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure me and JD can carry the podcast. <laughs> so I come up over the hill. <laughs> And then he's getting up off the ground. He gets up. He gives me the okay sign. And I was really happy because I was like, well, well, good. He's not hurt. But then I also got the feeling. I'm like, you know how it is? Like you come up on a crime scene and you're like, you mean I walked all the way up here and I don't get to see a bone sticking out of the arm or anything crazy. But anyway, he was okay. So he's back with us tonight. And I'm thankful for that. With all honesty, that's not the best part of the story, though. <laughs> the best part of the story is the light doesn't work. No, no, the light, every single light, every single light I change works. Because after, because you got, they came up, Brad and JD came to the house last night. We watched the Kentucky game, and yeah. then we watched that awful um, LSU LSU Oklahoma game. That was awful. And man. well, I mean, LSU just beat them. This wasn't a good game. Yeah. So when you guys left, I walked out, and I was like. Son of a gun. <laughs> that light didn't even work. Yeah. And and I fell. And, and I mean, I'm serious. My shoulder is so, it hurts so bad. It is so sore right now. Like I woke up, you know how it is. You sleep on it. And, yep. and I woke up. I was like, oh my God, it hurts so bad. But yeah, no, Brad did. Because from his house, like it goes up on a hill. So he couldn't even see me laying on the ground. And yeah. I get up and I see him coming. And he was sprinting. Don't let him lie. <laughs> he was sprinting. His sons, Gunner and Cannon, couldn't even keep up with him. He was running so hard to get to It was like Baywatch, slow motion. I was coming through the bottom. (laughs) So, yeah. So, there you go. There's another Jimmy Don did some stupid story. So It it, happens, man. (laughs) I know all about it. (laughs) So, did everybody have a good Christmas? I mean, did everybody have a good, good Christmas holiday? Yeah, my Christmas was good. You know, we had some family in, you know. I got picked off my politics, of course. You know, the Trump blanket set everything off. Like, had a debate. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. You know, and, but a little bit frustrated about all that stuff. Like, <laughs> like I like I know you guys think that I'm, I am opinionated. I, I definitely am. That's not just opinion. I definitely am opinionated. But, like, I was trying to get through the holiday and not get into all that. But everybody felt like they need to make their point. And so, like... That was a little bit frustrating for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I even had one person tell me that, oh, you're just trying to be different. <sighs> That's the only reason you are got the beliefs that you believe you're not trying. I was like, and so I was like, you know what? There's there's worse things than being different. Like being a sheep is, is definitely worse. And so like, like I'm, I agree. Like, like there's always, like I used to be able to have a discussion. That's why this podcast was started. But it's also like, Man, there's a place in time for this, and and I was a little bit. I felt like attacked a little bit by some of my family members. Like, oh, really? Yeah. Like, like that's like for real. Like, like well, I mean, shit. I guess well, Brad, we'll hold off on doing what we were going to do. Yeah, because I, I'm like, I was thinking about filing a grievance because I feel like we should only be able to attack you on this podcast. <laughs> that that shouldn't go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were going to totally attack JD on the last you know five minutes of this podcast on his politics, but we will we will back <laughs> off. Since, since we now know you're sensitive about it, we'll we'll make sure we're good. <laughs> well, I only like to debate people who knows what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and since. <laughs> don't. It was, what about you, Josh? Like being in East Kentucky, how was it, man? Like, I'm sure. I, I, like, I don't know if you live in the subdivision or not, but I'm, I'm assuming living <laughs> in Cincinnati, your neighbors are probably a lot closer than what they are in Turkey Creek. Yeah, yeah. We we. It's a different situation of having people right on top of you, and um, neighbors are not as they're good neighbors, but um, it's not like every day. Hey, what's going on? That never happens. Like, I'm out walking the dog every day. And if I see him, he'll be like, oh, hey, what's up? But I don't know anything about my neighbors, and I've been there for over a year. And um, so, like, as far as knowing their politics and stuff like that, I mean, if I have a drink with them or something, I'll figure that out. But other than that, it's it's pretty nonchalant and keep to ourselves. And I'm like, well, it's not like back home where, you know. No, everybody, everybody knows cousin, everybody. And, oh, yeah. Or your mom taught my kid in school or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every time you turn around. What about you, Brad? How was your... Christmas. I had a good Christmas. I have a big family and we're all pretty opinionated mm-hmm. and we are on complete opposite ends of the, the spectrum politically. Sure. And one thing that we kind of uh, silently agree on, we don't talk about politics. Because what's funny then. about that, J.D., is his family's the exact opposite of yours. 
Mm. He is the different one in his family. Mm. You know, where your family, all oh, maybe Republicans, Trump supporters, sure. et cetera, and you're the, the liberal, yeah. so to speak. In Brad's family, everybody's Democratic. And Brad and is the... And it's kind of different on different sides. I mean, there's a lot of spectrums and, and I see you know, in between. Your sister, but, I think. Was your sister put a picture on Facebook? Jill, was that right? Was that your sister? She put a picture with you and your brothers? Yeah, she was like... Brad looks confused. Yes, I got to keep them. I got to keep them under control. Like I'm the sister. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're, we're all kinds of different places, you know. Just like when the uh, gubernatorial election, you know, you've got sure. Bevan running. I've got my, you know, multiple family members that are teachers, and then you've got right. I've got a lot of family members that are left. I got a lot of family members that are Democrat, and then I've got some that even that are Republican, that are more of the Reagan Republican. That's not, you know, I'm more independent let's just figure it out and go after everybody and see what happens at the end so but we don't talk about it um and you know that's good with me yeah but no i had an awesome christmas (laughs) i got to i got to spend it got to be with all four of my kids and that's perfect i used to hear my dad say that and he'd say all i want is to get the kids together and i was like how cheesy is that let's just open some presents you know that's what it's about (laughs) but now that i'm i turned 40 last month so I guess I'm getting old now and got to spend time with the family. And, and you don't know. When you're younger and people say that, you don't know. But as you get older and, like, to see my kids happy, man, like, that's the best Christmas gift, like, I could ever, ever get. Like, and it goes back to the John Lennon saying, or the John Lennon story, when his teacher asked him what he want to be. For, write a report on what you want to be when you get older. And he put happy. Hmm. And she said, I don't think you understood the assignment. And he said, I don't think you understand life. Like, like that's all I wanted for my Christmas. And that's why Christmas is good. It's good with me, man. Yeah, I had a good one. All my family, you know, we had a, a cousin. My side of the family, my mom's side is big. And we're all more like brothers and sisters than we are. We were all raised right together. Right. And so we're more like brothers and sisters. And we lost one of our cousins earlier this year. And she was the heart and soul of us. She was probably the best of us as far as living life and the funnest, the best man. I mean, sure. she, <laughs> she knew how to live life. Be she, a bev. Yeah, be a bev, man. She was happy. And so we, because of that, what we normally do is we have a party on Christmas Eve. And, but that was going to be a little hard this year. So we ended up doing it the weekend before Christmas and everybody came. And you don't know how happy that, how happy that made me. Everybody came to my house. All my cousins were there. You know, because everybody has, like Josh said at the beginning, you know, this was his year to come to Eastern Kentucky. Well, that's how everybody is, right? So because we did it earlier, everybody got to come. Right. And that was awesome. And my girls had a ball. They were really happy, you know, the next morning. I'm like, you, J.D. It's funny how when you get older, that's what it is. Mm. And, you know, they were like, well, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I just want you all to be here, have my family around, and be happy. And I know that's sappy, but it's the truth. I said, as you get older, that's the kind of thing that becomes important. Yeah, my, my kids come here for three days, man. And, like, I'm cool with that. Like, that's just cool with me. That's yeah. all I need. So, all right. So, to finish up the show, I want to talk, you know, New Year's Eve is coming up. Yeah. And one of the big things is New Year's resolutions. So... Do you guys personally have any New Year's resolutions? Or do you think they're stupid? I personally think they're kind of stupid. Um, Not that there's anything wrong with a New Year's resolution or doing it, but we seem to do these things around these holidays, and they usually don't work out. Like, I'm kind of a weirdo, but I don't do anything on a scheduled, you know, just like with my wife. I don't buy her flowers on Valentine's Day. I'd rather do it in the middle of a week or a month when it makes absolutely no sense or it's not around any holiday. I think the stuff means more. I work that way personally myself. If I decide I want to do something, I look in the mirror on the way out the door and I was like, okay, I'm going to start that today. I don't say, okay, well, I'll tell you what, four months from now, January 1st, I'm going to get rolling on this. So me personally, I don't really do the new year's resolution thing, but you guys. Uh, yeah, I'm same boat. Um, I've done resolutions before, but I always lie to myself and let myself down. I've been committed to things, but I'm not generally that guy. Because <laughs> I've had friends that are like, I'm going to start jujitsu, and they become like, you know, whatever belt level they're at after just a year or two, and they're just like, yeah, this is my thing now. And I'm like, my thing's watching TV on the couch, man. Like, I don't know. I'm like, but, you know, and, there, and I want to be healthier, and now that we're getting older and stuff, and like you said, our kids, and we think about that and wanting to be around for them and things. 
I want to be healthier. So I'm trying to eat oatmeal every morning or eat some Cheerios to help with cholesterol. And, and, but I, I need to do more. But it's it's a big we got toddlers. It's a whole different ball game for me now. So I'm just trying to figure out day to day, like, okay, what can I pull off today? But uh, but yeah, it's no no resolutions for me, but I'll I'll try to do gooder. <laughs> do gooder. All right. Like I'm the same way. Like I'm I don't necessarily think that New Year's new I'm definitely not getting drunk. <laughs> not necessarily that New Year's resolutions are stupid. Like right. I don't think people that do them are stupid. I'm just like Brad, like I don't think that I'm just gonna put that off to the new year. You know what I mean? Uh but I do have some ideals and some goals in mind as the year progresses this year. And uh you know, I'm excited for twenty twenty, man. Like I'm ready to leave twenty nineteen behind. I'm I you know that's it. Like yeah, bring on twenty twenty. Yeah, well, I'm like you guys. I don't have I don't really set New Year's resolutions. Now the one thing I do, like and you can hear as we get sappy at the end of last week's podcast, is I do an assessment of my year. I've done it for the past twenty years. I will do an assessment of my year and then where I want to be this time next year. Sure. Set goals for myself. I don't know if that's really making a resolution, but that is what I do. I've always done that. And I'm incredibly excited for 2020 because, A, January 1st, I no longer have to daily jack with the Martin County Water District. Here, here. Here, here. (laughs) Two, I'm excited to see what happens with the Just Add Bourbon podcast. Give us a full year at this. We finally, hopefully, got the sound right. We're having some good guests in. We're starting to gain a little traction. I mean, we, you know, it's been... It's been good to see what we've done in four months. Yeah. It's been, been awesome. And... I get to get back into my mortgage business, you know, full bore. I've got a lot of big plans for it. And I, I'm excited, man. I said my kids, they've got a lot of stuff going on. I'm excited to see how their years go. And so I don't know that I necessarily set resolutions, but I definitely have some goals set for myself uh, as we go forward. Yeah, I think one thing and uh, that Josh brought up was just the the health part of it. You know, I kind of started on a little little journey about a year and a half ago with trying to get some get some stuff right, just work on that a little bit. You know, I was I was a jock in school and always athletic and whatever. And then over the years, I got fat and didn't do anything, try to take care of myself. Uh, but you know, it really it it started hit me as I was pushing. You know, I just turned forty, and you start thinking this. You know, we don't value our body much just because it comes as standard equipment. Yeah. So you don't put much much value on it, but then you start thinking, okay, hey, look, I'm I'm halfway through, and I only get one ride on this roller coaster. Yeah. You know, I might might need to might need to take care of what I got. I definitely have some health things I want to do this year. Some goals, not necessarily resolutions, but those are the things I'm, I'm gonna keep private. Like I don't want to put that out there in case I don't meet them, and I want to put them out there if I do meet them. But you know, I definitely. Don't like who I am when I see it. Like when I look in the mirror, like I don't like the weight I'm at. I don't like, so I'm going to fix some of that. I think like, like that's definitely one of the things I'm. You know, Tiff last year it was, but it was after the first of the year she messaged me and said, "Hey, you want to do this Biggest Loser thing with me?" I hadn't really thought about it, and I was like, "Yeah, sure. You know, I'll try it. Thousand dollar prize. I'll I'll try it." Sixty five pounds later. You know, that's one of my goals for next year, too, is to continue that progress. And Brad's gotten into some different things, taking some classes. I don't know if you really want to go into that, but he's got into some, you know, some things doing that. And so I'm hoping to work with Brad and continue to get healthier. That is that is a goal. That's one of my goals for the year. We're going to get Jimmy Don ready for Speedo season. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. He's in on mercy. It was good. Well, guys, I had a lot of fun this episode. Definitely different. Um, Josh, I want to thank you for coming in. Hey, man, I'm uh, happy to be here for sure. Everybody that's listening, we have a lot of people from Eastern Kentucky that listen to the show. Right here's another Eastern Kentucky boy that's out there doing a podcast, and it's a lot of fun to listen to. I listen to it, you know, when he puts them out. I always listen. And you're right, it is. It is, it is a lot of fun for everybody to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the Well Dad Gun Podcast. Well, I love that there name. There you go. But and I'm just glad to finally get you in house here. Yeah, man. Because you know we've been communicating back and forth on social media for what four or five months now. Yeah. 
And then now that I get to meet you in person, I feel like I've known you for at least like two, <laughs> three days, maybe. Yeah, right. <laughs> but no, he's got a good thing going. And the the great thing about the the podcast, and I'll listen to it on the way to work some mornings, is it's just it's so laid back. You have no idea what you're going to get yeah. until you tune in. And they're generally you, you usually try to do them around stories, right? Just yeah, personal always, experiences. Yeah. Um. What made you get into that? Like what, you know, you were before us. So what made you think, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to get in there and start a podcast and get myself on the interwebs. I I think like, (laughs) like most people that get into podcasting, um, I I dealt with it and worked around things for two years before I actually did it. Uh, Just like anybody else you talk to, I'd like to start one, but I just don't know. And I did that for two years and I would listen and I had a job that didn't take any brain work and I would listen to podcasts for hours and hours on end. And it was just amazing to see uh, free information being put out and not having you be required to pay anything or to do anything. All you had to do was listen. And your information wasn't always going to be perfect, but it was new information that you don't get exposed to when you hang out with the same people every day. Trump, Trump, Trump. But I mean, <laughs> that's not a dig at anybody. I was just trying to make a joke about it. But <laughs> but it was so interesting to see other people's point of views from around the world. And in my life, uh, my dad passed away from dementia and my grandpa passed away, his dad, and my mom's mom passed away from dementia and all within the past couple of years. And even some greater relatives died of dementia. And I found out so many stories uh, after they passed that I never knew about them. And I wanted other people to share their stories because those stories will just, when you die, they go away sometimes and you'll never be known. Not that you need to be famous or known as something huge, but your story needs to be out there so that the experiences you had weren't in vain. You know, if you went out and done something really awesome, or if you've done something really embarrassing, that needs to be shared with other people so that it, you don't, you're not a nobody when you pass away. You know what I mean? It's not not dark and demented that way, but that's my biggest thought behind it. It's like, I just want you to share your story. I want you to be funny. I want you to share a meaningful thing. My mom shared about how she had polio as a kid, and people now don't want to get vaccinated. And I'm like, do you, like, what? <laughs> so it's just, I don't know. I want people to share those stories and, and get them out there, and, and that's what it's become. I've been going over a year now and just making it happen. So, I mean, there's a country song called The Dash. Like, mm-hmm. you know, one day I'm going to have a tombstone that says 1979 to whatever. But the dash is going to represent a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's, I think, you know, your podcast, even this podcast a lot, we, we talk a lot of personal stuff that represents that dash. We want to hear those stories, man. Everybody's got their stories. And, you know, we want to hear them. Yeah. And you get it out there. It's recorded. It's there. Yeah. Because one thing that we've seen, you know, I was at my grandmother's uh, uh, about a month ago, and we were sitting looking through photo albums. And everybody used to print their pictures out, and you'd put them in a photo photo album. Well, now, everybody gets 2,000 pictures on their phone, and then the phone breaks, or you lose it, and you've lost all that. How many pictures have you developed in the last 10 years? So, if you think about, if we went around the room and said... Okay, what do you know about your parents? Everybody would probably know a lot. If you say, well, you know about your grandparents, well, you'd probably know quite a bit. If you ask who your great-grandfather was, who your great-great-grandfather, grandmother was, does anybody have any clue? So you get, you you think about, and we're going to be the same way, right? You get a couple generations down the line, and nobody is even going to know that you existed. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what I think is cool about doing it and, and listening to your podcast where people are just telling the stories. It's there. Yeah. You know, that stuff sticks. I'm assuming the Internet's still going to be around 50 years from now. Right. And I'm sure there's some kind of archive where somebody can pull up their great, great, great grandfather, uh, David Crumb, and listen to the podcast from last <laughs> week. <laughs> So, Josh, where all where can people find your podcast if they listen to podcasts and, and want to check it out? Uh, they can find it just about anywhere. Uh, Apple uh, Apple uh, Podcasts is the app that most people want to use just because they use the Apple device. But you can find it on iHeartRadio. You can find it on uh, Spotify. Uh, I'm not on YouTube like you guys, but uh, 
pretty much any podcatcher app that's out there. If you just type in "well dagum," all one word, just like it sounds, it's as dumb as it sounds. Uh, <laughs> you're you're going to find it. And um, but you can go to Pinecast. I have websites set up that you can click on from uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter uh, with my well dag at well dagum pod, and you can go to there and find out information if you need any information. You've got to say at least one time. Before we end this thing, you have to say the well gum in the radio voice as you do it on your podcast. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're on the spot. <laughs> Call me out like that. <laughs> well, welcome to well gum where by the end of the show, we hope to have you saying well gum. I learned something today. And one of the best things about Josh's <laughs> podcast are the pictures that he puts on with them, like JD. Sure. <laughs> I called him out, made sure mine was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and two, he put me in a dress. <laughs> yeah, he was. No, he did not. Brad was in a dress. <laughs> that was an actual picture of Brad. He found the picture of me in a dress. Whatever, same thing. <laughs> but no, guys, go out there and check out Josh's podcast. It, it's a lot of fun. You won't, you won't be sorry. It, it's a lot of fun. Um, and Josh, we appreciate all the help you've given us. We truly have the reason we're actually using three microphones tonight is because of some of the information that Josh sent us. Uh, instead of just having the one microphone sitting around like we did in the very, very beginning. Bumping knees. <laughs> Go and find us. We're out there on YouTube, iTunes, Podbean. You can check out our accounts. JD put some great stuff on Facebook. Uh, Brad runs the Twitter account. I put nothing on Instagram. Because I don't know how to use it. I'm trying to get my daughters to teach me how to truly use Instagram. Uh, but I don't know how to use it. So we'll finish this one up. So, J.D., because of how bad I could tell last in last week's episode, you wanted to do the exit. It's all yours. Take us off. I, I, you ain't going to back me down. I like it. <laughs> so no matter how bad your day's been or no how bad. I'm going to start over again. <laughs> this is why J.D. doesn't do it. <laughs> that, and because I get drunk. Exactly. <laughs> no matter how bad your day's been or how bad your week is going, if you just add a little bourbon, it'll get a little better. So for me, Brad, J.D., thank you for listening. This is the Just Add Bourbon Podcast. Happy New Year's. <laughs>